Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Siblings React and Drink. Yeah. My name is Rick. This is my lovely sister. Dennis. And what are we doing today? So today we're gonna watch a documentary that's a follow-up to Band of Brothers. So this is supposed to be like the real men of Easy Company and it's like a more documentary, pro probably more interviews with them. Okay. Stuff like that is what I'm imagining, but you know it's it's interesting to watch because th these are the men that survived. And what's this one that. called? This is called uh, "We Stand Alone Together: The Men of Easy Company," and it's from 2001, so it must have been released right after the series. I'm sure. Mm, yeah. uh, I don't think I knew about it until our member, our uh, subscribers, told us about it. Well, maybe they did this one first, and then they decided to do a series about this one. Oh, it's possible. Well, yeah. I don't know. Either way, we're glad it happened. Uh, yeah, I didn't really look into it, but... Cheers to the men of EC Company and every man and woman that participated in World War II. Absolutely. And from in, all over the world. Yeah, and any wars, any military people, thank you so much for your service. It was truly World War II, obviously. I, I was reading even Cuba, apparently... Uh, they sunk a German U-boat. Mm. Germany was trying to destroy the uh, ca um, Panama Canal. Mm. So Colombia also had some uh, some fights with uh, some U-boats, German U-boats, and uh, stuff like that. Mexico sent troops and uh, Air Force. Brazil sent twenty. I think they sent almost twenty-eight thousand soldiers. Mm. The Navy was supporting U.S. convoys all the way to Europe, and they sent uh, airplanes to Air Force. So every country participated or helped yeah. one way or another right. to defeat evil. Mm -hmm. But this is the story of the EC Easy Company. company. Uh, I think he goes all the way to G, right? Uh, Fox Company. I forgot what G1 is called. Uh, not sure how many companies they are in in each one but anyway we're ready to go what, what are we drinking in? so we are having a Bombay Sapphire gin with cranberry juice cheers to that speaking of Bombay Sapphire India they provided 2.5 million soldiers in World War II I mean they were part of the United Kingdom at the time mm. but it's a lot of people All right, and gin, our English friends like gin. <laughs> Everybody likes gin. Mm -mm. All right, so we're gonna hit play. Remember you can watch this on Patreon, the full unedited version with watch along. Uh, you can also join the channel membership. You get early access and uh, on No ads. Yeah, no ads, keyword, no ads. And a... Hmm. Random shell came in. Oh, wow. Five or ten feet away from me, because all mm. I remember is a tremendous blast. Hmm. And a it's close. Could see were the broken ends of my legs. Oh. And I thought my legs were gone. I was. Oh, man. But my, the broken part, both femurs were shattered. And they were. Oh. Ouch. I thought okay. of it was my mother. Oh. And, uh, this is going to be rough. What's she, mm -hmm. what she going to say? Because I was an only child. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mom. So did he walk in there or no? Or he, we didn't see him walk? No. In 1942, the U.S. Army assembled a volunteer parachute regiment to jump beyond enemy lines. That's right. And they all volunteered to go to... Within this unit was a company of men who found themselves at the front, forefront of the war in Europe. This might be actual footage, huh? Yeah. They parachuted into Normandy and D-Day. Yeah, that looks that looks like real footage. Fought for the liberation of Holland. Held the front line in the Battle of the Bulge. Huh, I remember that. Freezing their butts and off. And capture Hitler's eagle's nest. Yep. 
Uh, I think that's where they found all the bottles of booze, right? Mm -hmm. This company sustained one of the highest cash casualty rates of the war. Wow. Wow, really? Easy Company? These were the men of Easy Company. 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division. My father was able to find some kind of employment. We never went hungry. We lived on a farm at the time. It was... The war helped people, man, get out of find of work. When I got to about 10, I got a paper route. You know, that <laughs> five bucks a month, I mean. Hmm. I said, let's go in the Army. He said, hell, I don't want to go in no Army. I said, well, uh, you're going to have to go sooner or later. Something was wrong. Hmm. If you weren't in the service in those days, it was just what you had to do. Mm. The infantry, I knew that. I was going to be in some top kind of a unit or I wasn't going to be in the army. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know those people better than you will ever know anybody in your life. I mean, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm. I mean, you're together all the time. That progresses. Yeah. Train together, fight together. Everything. Together, 24-7, kind of. Each man was like a heavyweight champ of the world boxer. Out of 100%, only 10% made I it. I thought I was going to die. There wasn't no uh, holding back. You had to hang in or you had... Yeah, somebody in the comments said the amount of people that actually signed up, but not everyone made it. Right, of course. That's to, uh, to go into battle. EC Company was formed in July 1942 at Camp Tocoa, Georgia called Curry every every morning, run it up and back. If you couldn't do it why well, you'd end up in another unit. Of course the name Curry, as I understand it, means we stand mm -hmm. alone together. That's a, an Indian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Curry. You remember they kept saying Curry? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they I didn't know what it meant. That uh, the paratroopers of the hundred and first Airborne Division was as well trained as you could get a soldier to be at that time. Mm. Yeah, they had two years to train. It's a lot of training. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first time, the first jump you make is not uh, not all that bad. You don't know what you're doing. That's because you have no idea what you're going <laughs> to. Yeah. Or, why well, you shoot just open right there. As I went out the door, I was blank. I cannot remember leaving the plane until. Yeah. Wow. Tony Garcia. But after that, uh, it wasn't as bad. But it was kind of quite a thrill. It was just uh, like going on a roller coaster. <laughs> you get off and you want to go right back on again. Yeah. <laughs> it was a high, as they say these days. Everybody just seemed to win. Well, I guess a lot of them quit after the first jump, too, you know? They wanted to say, this is not for me. After the log, you know? Yep. And down is great. I was small, too, and I didn't hurt myself when I hit the ground. Some of the big ones. Man. Come on. What's the name? The thing you worry. Bricks. <laughs> you shoot. Did you pack it right? And you'd go through that. You'd pack it one day and jump the next day. <laughs> you had all night to think about it. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. <laughs> all kinds of ideas of what you might have done wrong. Or wow. That worked out fine. Oh, I'd be like paranoid, like undoing it and redoing it. Physically and mentally. And they were ready to jump. Thus, we started off for an order. Winters had been in the army already for like a couple of years, I think, before he yeah, volunteered September to the. September 1943, after 15 months of training, Easy Company boarded the transport to the. I can't read that fast. Got such an opening blast from the. Or opening wow. shot from the prop blast. Well, adrenaline, you oh, know, yeah. fear, all kinds of feelings. Down with my gun. I hit the ground in a kind of a feel. Hmm. And we were way, way got looking at my map, and we wasn't anywhere close to where we were supposed to be. We didn't know where we were. They were all separated, right? Yeah. They were all like all over. Nah. The plane just said green, get jump, and even if they didn't make it where they're supposed to be. But even as each one is jumping, you know, they all kind of yeah. Like there's no, you can't control it that much, especially back then. These guns were pointed and firing right down on the beach. And the people out of the landing... Are you guys going to go there? Utah Beach. 
You didn't plan on going? I don't I don't think so. From all the memorials and Yeah. You guys should? Because right, I haven't been planning it, but I, I can tell them. A uh, tactic plan. Oh man. Somebody in the comments mentioned that uh, the Germans were ready for it, you know, they yeah. flooded the fields around it. It wasn't a secret as they thought. What a way to die in combat, to be killed with a flying timber. Uh, <laughs> we were that close. It, uh, it's a million ways to die, I guess. Mm. Yeah, here is welcome. They call us angels from the sky, which we were. Oh. You were on the German occupation for four years, right? It's horrible. And you see paratroopers come out of the sky on Sunday morning. Who are they? They're the angels. They love you. Mm. And it was hard to even get <laughs> down the streets because the people were out there swarming all over us trying to... I bet, yeah. You know that? And they hugged you and kissed you. And we didn't mind. <laughs> the double, well, of course. double European kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet they didn't yeah, mind. Of course not. <laughs> Being kissed and hugged. <laughs> Trying to clean out the town because snipers did some damage in that situation like that. Yeah, that's a perfect opportunity for them. Well, and, and slows them down as the other guys get away. Right. As the Ger other Germans go away. Hell's Highway. Man. I know I'd have either had my head blown off or I would have definitely been blind. There's no... Oh, man. Wow. This got turned just part way and it exploded and then it, it caught me in the face, neck, left. Wow. So lucky that it wasn't worse. What you could do is turn your face away from it. Right. Wow. Some of the crowds because I could hear mm. screaming, hollering, crying, you know, and I think I threw the eight grenades in about four seconds. Oh, wow, yeah, he's like, <laughs> Or that counted the holes in me down at Nijmegen. Mm. Or that really counted the holes. I, I, I said there was 32. Oh, my God, wow. With artillery and shrapnel and probably rocks and whatever. Yeah. From the show. Joe Toy stepped out of him. And I run up. I remember that. Like it was just that. Toy, yeah. And he said, Oh, don't touch me. I said, Joe, what's my he said. That's when he lost his legs, right? Uh, I'm bad. I said, okay. I said, I'm gonna go see Jim. No, I think that was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You gotta remember what one guy did because he thought it was his job to do, and he took a shot for you. Oh. Oh. Man. Gotta live with that. The exhaustion. 70 days. Mm -hmm. The physical exhaustion affects their endurance to be able Of course. You don't realize it at the time you come off the line <sighs> from living in the mud and being absolute. <coughs> you don't realize at that point that you're only gonna be off the line for a few days and you're gonna be facing Bastogne. Mm. Yeah. That's where they were freezing their butts off. Six hundred thousand. Wow. That is like incredible. What it is? It is Bastogne. It is. This it is, is the old Jack. <laughs> <laughs> they went to visit this place again. Mm-hmm. Sure looks different now. There ain't no snow. These trees might have been replanted. Look how straight. No snow. Yeah, because that's how they were there. I can't see nothing of them. There, there's nothing there. They were all gone. Wow. Disintegrated. Unmerciful showing. Really? Everything I think. How sad for them. And yeah. like, they remember like it was yesterday. You and know, you know I mean? they were there, so you know who they are, but you don't see them anymore. You know, you just see like pieces. But I mean, just like for them to oh, remember yeah. that all these years later. We go to bed and I, I don't know why I will tell you that the first thing I'll say is I'm glad I'm not in Bastogne. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Pitch weapons up to the truck, you catch a weapon, that's what you got till you got the best home. That's when Jimmy, what's it, Jimmy Fallon showed up with uh, 
<laughs> a Jeep full of Jimmy felt, yeah. I'm going on up ahead and we're marching towards it with hardly any ammunition. We marched through shit. Yeah, went up to the, the forward side of Bastogne and dug in and then it snowed. Yeah, to top it off it's snowing. You're wrong. Is it wet and cold? Yeah. A lot of everything you didn't like. Yeah, that's what the Germans did, I guess. They figured at this particular time we was on top of a kind of a heat. Do it in, during the winter. Still had pine trees. So they weren't expecting any action till spring, they said, right? I think in the service. Yeah. You'd be surprised how quick you can get through that hard ground when somebody's shooting match and them shells will fall. Now, yeah. We just have to dig that hole. Well, we say we came experts on foreign European soil. We dug. <laughs> yeah. Two people could dig a better hole than one. And the ground was frozen. Of course. So uh, you just chip it out. Oh, man. By the time you get it done, they whistle for you to, we're moving out, and you go someplace. Ah, great. Jesus. Earth shaking. If you live through them, you remember them for the rest of your life. And Yeah, yeah I'm sure. And the Germans had this. You know, this woods of ours zeroed in completely, and and as we hit the woods, why this tremendous artillery attack came. I think that's when they were pissed off because they were the other guys that were there before had pooped on their oh, yeah. foxholes. Mm -hmm. And they realized why. Airflow whoppers, that's a rocket thing that's a screaming sound. Mm. Hmm. Scared the hell I mean I was scared, but I think I was petrified then. I thought the whole world, I thought the whole world was shooting at us at once. I just Can you imagine even when there's fireworks, they're probably like, you know, when they're home, 4th of July, it's like, yeah, wow. We got them out of there, I think <sighs> the nine, some others, and, and uh, they brought a, a jeep down and we put them on stretchers and, and uh, I better not talk about it. I'm not talking. <laughs> See, none of them can even retell the story. That's how hard it is. Yeah. And when we had a man who was killed, we found that he was at peace. Yeah. Got to be able to. Yeah. Cope with it somehow. Yeah. Look at the positive side, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's oh, no town four way. He, he got killed. Oh man. So. uh yeah, it's being wounded a couple of times, three times, then you think, oh, I want to make it. <laughs> and uh, our job is to get mm. to the end and get to the heart of it. Yeah, they want to set our nuts around during. <laughs> mm. This is the goal of uh, the British. Everybody wanted to capture it. Burned by SS troops in the war's last days, the chalet from which he hoped to rule the world now lies in ruins. American Air Force's pictures show... So they burned it themselves. ...and the great window through which the Fuhrer gazed out on the Alps. Wow. We took Bridges' guard and made a fit. And no fighting, no shooting. The only thing I seen in Bridges' guard was a couple of dead black uniforms. I wonder if there's anything there now, like today, or did they just get rid of the whole thing? Let us know that in the comments. Yeah. Like, is it a tourist place that people check it out. Don't find out. Hmm. That place was full of this big arch. Oh. Rembrandt. All those. A lot of memorabilia they could so they sold later probably. Yeah. Oh, soldiers like us, we don't recognize a painting when we see it. The 101st Airborne Division. <laughs> Gehring's personal art collection hidden in a subterranean chamber. 1,200 artworks worth untold millions are included. Shit they were, they had stolen. Yeah. We found a, a warehouse full of gin. Yeah, I'm sure See? that was not returned to. <laughs> Cheers to that. And we took it all and set up a bar. At <laughs> Wine cellars out of yeah. Eagle's Nest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we stayed pretty well oiled for a oh, while. Oh, that, that champagne was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I went to the back, went to sleep. I didn't wake up the next day. I made it. <laughs> wow. It didn't taste like it would hurt you. It tastes like 
uh, some pain sneaks up on you, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they picked up a few trinkets, I had no problem. Right? Totally. Mm -hmm. A few trinkets, but... <laughs> What's his name was Spears was in the show at least the show it was cleaning house man right? yeah taking everything we'll talk about that when we get there well here we are we got it now how do you <laughs> <laughs> wow twenty five thousand German troops man and I might have been good friends we might we might have had a lot in common we might have liked to fish yeah he might have liked to hunt uh, you never know you know of course they that's true. I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. I mean, what are you going to do? You, you're defending, you're fighting, whatever the case is. Yeah. But I realized this pistol had never been... Oh, wow. There was no blood on it. Mm. That's the way Man. all war should end. With an agreement with no blood on it. Yeah. This pistol has mm. never, never been fired since I've been had fired. It, and it will not be fired. He like kept it pristine, you know? Yeah. Mm. Inactivated from duty. November 30th of 45. Hmm. So I'll, a long time. What was it? Easy Company, they said, or? Yeah. Well, I was a war hero, and I just come home, went back to it like we did before one. Just go to work. So no, that was Dandron at first. Probably still around. I think it was difficult. Fought in Vietnam. A letter carrier for 37 years. I built home. I went into construction. I went into home. Mm. Okay. Tedious work. I'd done everything. You name it, I'd done it. <laughs> Without a leg, too. Yeah. Working on the waterfront. And I went with the CIA in Washington. Got my degree in 1948. After the war, I became a teacher and taught for almost 30 years. Got a job working. Wow. Two works. I was making $75 a week. We've never become wealthy in life, but we have... That's what Nixon, what's he, his friend Nixon, the guy with the bad 69? Yeah. I done well, too. Thank God. I want to welcome... Oh, wow. Nice. Mm. And I want to extend the best wishes to all the men from Company E506. I love you. God bless you all. Thank you. Oh, that's so nice. But they, they get together. Yeah. This is a chance to get together and talk to each other. Yeah. Live some of the army experiences. But we have... My friend Eric, I think he still attends. His father was at Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah. And they have a reunion every yeah, year. Yeah, I bet. Here or every so often. Right. That's good. Like nothing that I've ever experienced anywhere, not in college, not, not in any with any other group of people. Well, you're trusting those people to have your back and for you to have theirs, you know? Well, become family. After all these years, that's, hmm. that's the thing. Yeah. Wow. You know. Yeah. Figured it's something that uh, didn't need talking about. It was done over with. Tom? No. She he never talked about it, I guess, my no. dad said. But he told my dad a few things. But yeah. Probably because our dad asked him specific yeah. questions. He was there on D-Day, yeah. How it happened that uh, those various individuals happened to end up in E Company, I don't know. But as you know, every army unit thinks it's the best. Uh, but we knew we were <laughs> the best. <laughs> <laughs> the difference, you know. Right? They knew, and I just thought... <laughs> Do you remember the letter that Mike Ranney wrote me? Do you remember how I ended it? I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day. I like this one. Grandpa said no. But I served. I served. What's the same? Killed in action. Easy company. Parachute. Oh, they say everyone that died. Yeah. 
A lot of them on D-Day, look at that. Look, Thomas Meehan. Wow. That's so... I, I remember there being That's a Meehan. That's Tom's name, right? Meehan yeah. is the last name? Yeah. With Thomas? Yep. Wow. Maybe somebody else or... It was a mistake. <laughs> I wonder. I'm sure he saw the series. I don't know. When did Tom die? I don't remember the year. It was like 2009 or something. Well, he, I don't or think he was a paratrooper, seven. though. I don't know if he was... Uh, I don't know what branch... I know he served in the Army, but I don't know what branch. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, what, I don't either. If he was airborne or not. He was on D-Day. He was... We survived the beach, from what I understand. We used to have a few beers at night, and I'd sing, and go on here would try to come over and sing. He'd say to go on here, go on here, mm. you're Italian, you don't know this song. Go on here, could <laughs> sing it better than he did. The bridge you don't play. Bridget of Flynn. Bridget O'Flynn. Then, sure it's a fine time for you to come. <laughs> you went to see the big parade, the big parade, me I show the big parade and never took <laughs> on the water, Bridget, darling. Now that's ah, he's a good. song toy like. Oh, that's for oh. You only needed a special beer. Yeah, he's Too good Too bad singer. you were drunk because you were in great physical <laughs> condition. <laughs> Kurahi. Wow, what a good ending seeing uh, this documentary. Yeah. I don't know if they made one for, for the guys from the Pacific. Let us know in the comments if they did make a documentary like that. Yeah. Just, I don't know, just, just a breed of their own. I mean, it's amazing. These guys were hardcore. Yeah. I'm glad they made these, uh, this, the documentary as well as the series about them. You they know? got honored, yeah. Well, they're still, most of them are still alive and they still see each other and they're such a close-knit, knit, uh, close-knit group. Yeah. That, you know, I'm glad that they honored them in that way. All right, so I don't think there's much to say. These things make me speechless anyway. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Just to think and contemplate. Right. Yep. Thank you so much for, um, you know, you guys, we made a poll and just won it. And we thank you so much for recommending this to us. Goodbye. Later. <laughs>